Today we're going to take a brief tour through a handful of some of the most foundational quantities. The most basic quantity is the quantity of length. That's the same as the quantity of width or height or distance. It's just the, the distance between two different positions in space. Length has units. The standard unit, the unit that we're going to use almost exclusively here in physics, is the meter. The meters are measured using a meter stick, which looks something like this. You can also see a handful of other smaller units. Most meter sticks are separated into 100 centimeters, where the numbers are listed. That's about the width of a pinky. And each centimeter is further divided into 10 millimeters, which is about the width of a dime. In all, there's 100 centimeters in one meter. And since there's 10 millimeters in a centimeter, that means there's 1,000 millimeters in a meter. Now, there are other units that we can use as well. I call these non-standard units. They're perfectly good units. And in fact, here in America, some of them are even more popular than the meter. But they're not the standard unit. I make a big deal about this because of a common mantra you'll hear me say throughout the class. And that is, if you always use standard units, you'll always get standard units. What I mean by that is when we're applying a bunch of numbers into formulas, sometimes it's hard to know what unit we're going to get when we're done. That's where the mantra comes into play. If you always use standard units, you'll always get standard units. So anytime I introduce a quantity to you, I'm going to tell you what the standard is, but I'll also show you a whole bunch of other units that are popular too. For length, there are lots of units. Mainly the English system has a standard unit called a foot. But that can be broken up into inches, or yards, or miles. I've already shown you centimeters. A uh, millimeter is on there, too. A kilometer is on the other side of things. That's really big. There's a 1,000 meters in a kilometer. And when you start talking about extremely big things, astronomically big things, then the ruler that you use is actually a light year. I'm going to show you a bunch of conversions and give you a second. In fact. I'll show you a bunch of conversions now. And you might want to pause for a second and write down some of these on a note card. These are some conversions that you might need to make over the course of the year. The next foundational quantity is time. Time is the duration or the interval between two different events. This is usually measured on a stopwatch, as shown below. The unit for time, the standard unit, is a second. A second is approximately the amount of time it takes for you to say your full name. Let's take a second and watch some online stopwatches so you get a feel for how long a second really is. Let's start with an ordinary stopwatch. As I press Start, you can see the numbers going up by seconds. Underneath is thousands of seconds, or what we call milliseconds. If I were to press Pause, so far 10.717 seconds has gone by. Now I'd also like you to hear how long a second is. And to do that, I've got an online metronome. Let's set this at 60 beats per minute and press Start. That's how long a second is. That's how long a second is. Usually, when you count seconds, you're taught to count 1 1,000, 2 1,000, 3 1,000, 4 1,000, 5 1,000, 6 1,000. That has four syllables in each one. So as you're counting, if you end on thou, that would mean that you're about 1.5 or 2.5 seconds long. So you can actually predict, just by counting, time to within a quarter of a second or so. Let's bump the speed up to 120 beats per minute.
Now each of these clicks represents a half of a second, and if you were to count 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, you can see that the thous are always on the halves. Now that metronome is great and all, but you seldom have a metronome available to you when you're just out in the field measuring something. Here instead, it's useful to have a song in your head that corresponds to 120 beats per minute. The song I had always grown up learning was Do Wa Diddy, Diddy Dum Diddy Do. It's basically at 120 beats per minute. I've gone ahead and looked up a couple more relatively newer songs. Uh, Teenage Dream by Katy Perry. That's about 120 beats per minute. And uh, Don't Stop Believin', you know, Don't Stop Believin', that's uh, basically 120 beats per minute, too. So if you start to sing either of these songs, you can find 120 beats per minute and have a pretty good idea of what a second is. Here's a handful of other non-standard units. Seconds can be broken down into milliseconds or typically on a stopwatch, seconds are broken down into hundredths of seconds. You can go even further and microseconds. Micro means times 10 to the negative sixth. And nano is even smaller. Nano is times 10 to the negative ninth, or billionth of seconds. I include that only for electronic purposes. A lot of your computers nowadays operate on the time scale of nanoseconds. And of course, there's minutes and hours and years. Again, I'm going to show you a list of different conversions, and I'll allow you to pause and record any of these that you might find useful. The final foundational quantity that I'd like to discuss today is the quantity of mass. Mass is the amount of matter, or essentially how much stuff you've got. Really, it boils down to the sheer number of protons and neutrons and atoms and things that you have in a given substance. Now, mass is an important concept because it is the measure of an object's resistance to change, or sometimes it's called its inertia. Now, the standard unit for mass is a kilogram. I've shown a picture of a kilogram down below. The official kilogram is a solid cylinder of platinum iridium metal. And this cylinder is stored at the National Institute of Science and Technology in Maryland. Thankfully, we don't have to go to Maryland and check out the kilogram in order to measure things. We can measure things quite conveniently on a scale. There are other non-standard units of mass as well. Some non-standard units listed below are a slug, which is about 32 pounds, which is another unit of mass. I put a little asterisk there because technically pounds is a unit of force, and there is a slight difference between masses and forces, which we'll get into when we study that later on in the year. But for now, you can consider pounds as a measure of mass. There's also grams. There's a thousand grams in a kilogram, and smaller yet is milligrams. You usually use milligrams when you're talking about things on the scale of medicines, for instance. Many dosages are given out in milligrams. And there's a unit of mass even smaller, and that is the mass of a single neutron or proton, which you might have seen in chemistry classes before, based off of carbon-12. Again, let me show you a list of different conversions and I encourage you to pause for a moment and record any of these that you might want. I also want to show you just a handful of typical math values to get an idea of how big a kilogram really is. Some of the ones that you probably ought to pay attention to are the mass of a typical human. An adult human weighs somewhere between 60 and 70 kilograms. A newborn baby, on the other hand, is closer to 3 or 4 kilograms. A small coin is no longer measured in kilograms anymore, 
but measured on the scale of grams. A penny weighs approximately 5 grams, for instance. Cars are a little bit bigger in the hundreds of kilograms. Ships and boats are in the millions of kilograms. And then you've got things like the moon and the earth and the sun that are measured in billions of billions of kilograms. It just goes to show you the vast array of different sizes of things that exist in our world today.